So let's bring in one of former President Trump's attorneys, Alina Haba. Alina, welcome. Good to have you with us this afternoon. Um, let me get your reaction first to these three seated jurors. Um, so they need nine more. Seems like they're making decent progress two days into this. Um, and we know that seat four, um, this is the publicly available information, will be the four-person a male from West Harlem, originally from Ireland, um, says he gets his news from The New York Times, The Daily Mail, Fox, MSNBC. Seat number nine um, is uh, a woman, a native New Yorker, a nurse. And seat number 12 is a man from Chelsea, grew up in Oregon, an attorney practicing corporate law. So tell me, tell me how you think about this process so far in seating the jury, Alina, and welcome. Sure. Thank you. Um, I think that we're seeing a painful, unfortunately, selection because we're in the state of New York, which is definitely by design. There is no question that Bragg bringing this in New York, uh, look at the Fulton County DA and, and so on and so forth, Washington, D.C. These venues are selected exactly for this reason, Martha, so that they have a blue state with a blue pool. There's only 20 percent or so that are uh, Republican and conservative. And finding a needle in a haystack is going to be really difficult for them. What we're seeing and hearing out of the court is that these attorneys are looking at their social media posts, some of which have been challenged because they had celebratory posts when President Trump um, was allegedly lost the 2020 election. And we have that showing uh, clearly. So it's going to be a really difficult process. The fact that they have three is promising so far. Um, but they've got nine more seats to fill, and, and we'll see what that process is. Again, I do think it'll be about two weeks, yeah. but this is going to be a very a very difficult uh, job for, for yeah. the defense team. Yeah. I mean, uh, we spoke to Andy McCarthy earlier. He did a terrorism trial back in the early 2000s. He said it took a month to seat a jury in that yeah. case. Um, so, you know, we'll see if it's two weeks. Um, we'll see how, how that goes, and we'll hope that uh, the people that are seated can be fair. With regard to the, the judge right. sort of repeatedly admonishing the former president, to, uh, this time it was for muttering during the jury selection process and sort of responding to one of the jurors who was answering a question. There's also obviously these three social media posts that um, the DA says violate the gag order and that he could go away to jail for 30 days if he continues this. this. Do you think that will stop um, this kind of posting about the witnesses? You know, his order was vague, number one. Number two, these are posts, some of them are posts made by other people that he reposts. Right. Uh, you're looking there at a letter from Stormy Daniels where she denies ever having an affair with That's President right. Trump. Um, you're looking at publicly made comments, which are frankly in response to these witnesses going on MSNBC and CNN and being able to speak. So if the ultimate goal, Martha, is that you don't taint a jury pool, then explain to me why it is that these witnesses are able to go on and talk about the case. The witnesses, the same witnesses that are the basis for these witch hunts, how are they allowed to go on CNN and MSNBC and speak about what they want to speak to, but the leading candidate and nominee for the GOP can't respond? That is so unconstitutional that is a dual system of justice and there's no place for it you know it's a great point because we do see um cohen and daniels speaking out quite a bit and that's exactly the the substance of what president trump was tweeting about in in this <laughs> you know saying that it's outrageous right. that cohen and daniels can do countless tv interviews post on social and make money on bogus documentaries he writes um, and this is Avenatti. This is right. what he retweeted. It's, it's pretty funny, don't you think, that, that uh, the president's pra praising Michael Avenatti, who was Stormy Daniels' Listen, attorney, and it went know. to jail after that? You I mean, what a world, Alina. It is quite a world, but I'll tell you, people are coming out of the woodworks. I think it's very mm -hmm. telling, to be honest, Martha. People are sick and tired of seeing it. Um, Avenatti was there. He was at one point standing with Stormy and profiting from her, and now he's looking at this and going, this is actually a witch hunt. I think that's what the American people are doing at the moment. They're seeing it. They're flipping. They're uh, taking independence and moving them to the Republican Party because they're sick and tired of seeing this injustice. And the judge admonishing 
punishing the defendant. I've seen it time and time again. I've been admonished like that. It's by design. It's to make you appear to be uh, inept. It's to make you appear to be stupid in front of a jury. And don't think that it's not intentional. You know, well, all, the, ask... all the trolls, all the journalists, they'll, they'll put that yeah. out there. And, and I mean, a lot of like people would interpret that on both sides of people trying to, you know, impact the jury pool and get their message out there right. before these jury members right. are chosen, um, which is obviously something that's a bit of a concern. But my, I want to go back to my question before I let you go. Do you think that this threat of 30 days in jail will change the social media actions of the former president in any way, or will he keep doing this? I don't think so. I, I think that he is respectful, but there has to be boundaries and we should appeal it. It's currently on appeal. So there's also a due process element to this. We have items on appeal in this case that have not yet been heard. Is so, he concerned about the possibility um, we'll see, of being sent is... to jail as a ramification? No. of these? He's not concerned about being sent to jail. I I don't I, I think like anybody he's concerned about going to jail but if they put him in jail for his first amendment right he will be like Nelson Mandela I mean right. that would be just absurd and frankly they'll win um, him the Alina, election I just have a second but you know there's two reports both days of him falling asleep in in court any reaction to that is he tired has he just been running around a lot or any thoughts on that uh, if anything, he's probably brutally bored. I mean, he, it's 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 painful. They make him sit there through jury selection. The first day was procedural. Uh, but no, you know, I've heard that report. It's unlikely. I know him. I sat through trial after trial with him. That never happens. Well, so that you have. Uh, President Trump is, is incredibly focused. <laughs> All right. Alina, thank you, as always. Click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You won't get it anywhere else.